Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, what is a business therapist and how do you know if you need one? A journey of a true entrepreneur, next. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, on this show, if you've been watching for any length of time, you know I love to interview business coaches, business uh, strategists. I've never interviewed a business therapist before, but uh, my new best friend here, Brandon Powell, is a business therapist with the Business Therapy Firm. Thanks for coming on the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here today. Well, first of all, I want to congratulate you because you are on brand. I know you're a branding expert and you show up dressed to the nines with the fedora. You're, you're styling. So uh, I'm glad uh, you walked your talk. I appreciate it. I borrowed it from my closet. I have to give it back later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell us your journey. How did you become a business therapist? Oh, my goodness. Um, I, I've been an entrepreneur for 16 years, but wait, there's no need to be impressed. I've bumped my head most of those years, learned a lot of hard lessons. Um, where it is today is not where it started. I, I had a chance to basically um, just start off doing t-shirts for churches and, and Fast forward, after trying to take and pull orders, I, I learned a little bit about design and then went back to school for it. And then throughout those years, I realized I like talking to people. I like listening to people and trying to serve people. And, and so the idea was first business consulting, and then it changed into business therapy um, because there's a side that was a priority of listening to the people that I'm talking to. And sure, we create marketing collateral, but the first thing is we want to get to know the person and get to know who you are and what you care about, because if we create those marketing pieces before we understand your vision, we really haven't had a chance to maximize the relationship. And he's a prolific author. I wrote one book 20 years ago, almost killed me. You're, you're on your fifth book. We're going to put up on the screen, uh, The Art of Business, Principles and Strategies for the Everyday Entrepreneur. Tell us about the book. So the book is, is throughout those years of me uh, bumping my head and getting all those nice, wholesome lessons, uh, I decided to kind of capsulize that. It's about 750 hours worth of intellectual property of in the field time with clients who taught me how to teach them. And so it's practical and it's meant to be actionable. Um, the people that I met, met with who were small business owners, about 100 employees or less, um, they needed information now. It's not like college where you defer the application. They needed application the same day, not tomorrow, but the same day. And so the book's intention is for an entrepreneur, whether you're at the startup phase, whether you're at the mid-level phase where you've gotten some years under your belt, or you've been in business for a long time, there's things that speak to all three phases. Because the common thread is that I found is that I work with people who are serious, they're gifted, but they've got a little bit of a need for clarity because they've hit a ceiling, they've gotten a little fatigued, and they want something to accelerate them. And so the book is definitely focused on doing that. Yeah, and sometimes you're too close to your own business to see the, the <laughs> shortcomings. We're going to put his website up on the screen and scroll down. I love it that you're a branding firm. You actually built this website yourself, so, so you're eating your own cooking. Uh, you do a lot of stuff, everything from logo work to... Uh, uh, you can do book covers. I mean, you, you do it all, don't you? Yeah. And, and, and with that being said, there's things that our company does and I have a team. And so it, I, I, I'd be remiss not to acknowledge all the team members, the de developers who mentor me, the, the technology people, all those nerds that I just say, hey, teach me, help me learn how we can serve our clients. And so on, on the service, we're, de we're designed to, we're structured to make sure we serve any kind of marketing collateral need. Um, but our front facing service is let us get to know who you are. Let's create that clarity and then we'll create the collateral. But over 30 different products and services we're equipped to be able to provide. And I love it. You are a content machine. You're always coming up with amazing videos. Here's one now. 
Hey, listen, have you been struggling lately to stay focused on your tasks? Well, let me introduce to you a concept called the 20 minute rule. What is that? I'm gonna break it down for you. So number one, here's a couple of benefits. You wanna use the phone app, it's already in your phone. It's a timer app. Set it for 20 minutes. You don't have to go beyond that. That's all you need. The reason you do that is because it allows you to stay focused for a short period of time without getting distracted. Ignore the notifications, the emails, the phone calls, all the distractions just for those 20 minutes. What it does is it allows you to stay focused. Like I said, if you don't get done with the task within that 20 minutes, don't worry about it. Just reset the clock. That is the 20 minute rule. And there are tons of tips just like that. And I think we can all learn from that. I mean, there are crazy distractions going on. You're trying to focus on one project and your phone beeps and you, you start thinking about, oh, I should look at that. And then you say, well, maybe I should be doing that. And so yeah, yeah we all find ourselves pulled in different directions, it, it, don't we? Absolutely. In fact, I made that video for me. It reminded me of what I needed to do. Um, you're exactly right. I get distracted by good things, you yes. know, important emails, important text messages. But if everything's important, nothing's important is what I found. Yes. And you also married well. Uh, I want to give you a chance to talk about your wife and her work with the Oak Cliff Chamber. Extremely proud of uh, my wife, uh, Keandra. Um, she is the president of the Oak Cliff Chamber and has been with the chamber for about over 15 years now. And so we were my company at the time was uh, different under a different name and we were servicing their marketing needs, had a chance to do flyers. And so we uh, had a business relationship and then we upgraded it. <laughs> I love it. We've got some pictures off of Facebook because you have a very vibrant chamber. It's so active. And I remember when I was uh, promoting my book years ago, I spoke to the Oak Cliff Chamber. Man, so much has happened in the last 20 years. Yeah, it's, it's been quite a journey. And even though COVID has impacted everyone, we have just decided to start being active again and do in-person activities and events. And we're really excited about loading up the calendar. Uh, for those chamber members and those sponsors and those that are really looking forward to getting back because we miss that human connection. We do miss it. And there's so much business and money flowing towards Oak Cliff right now. Um, congratulations on that. I also want to give you a chance to talk about uh, your wife's uh, Oak Cliff Works. Absolutely. So this is a workforce development program started by her uh, in about five or six years ago. It's a passion project and it's Primary focus is about uh, providing career training development for those who are underemployed at the time, not just to give them jobs, but to make sure that they transition, get them skilled, providing soft skills uh, so that they got not only land jobs, but get careers, but also be able to maintain them and sustain them. And so uh, it's a program that I've, I've had a chance to look at up close and personal things that I really didn't get a chance to see when I was just a contractor. But now volunteering with the chamber and seeing this program up close, I am so impressed and I'm in awe of the students that as they come in, they have needs. And to hear them talk about their own personal transformation, it, it is incredible. Yes. And one thing that I've experienced, because you and I have both been through a couple of recessions now in the last uh, <laughs> 15 years, when business is booming and people are just taking orders like realtors in the last couple of years uh, realtors didn't really have to do much but take orders mm -hmm. uh, this is a good time for realtors to be working on their marketing and working on all those things they neglected during the boom times would you mm -hmm. agree absolutely absolutely you know and, and the good thing for me is i get to learn from every industry i've had a realtor who um is and most people are really good at what they do and so i step in and i don't want to learn how to sell houses. That's your great gift and use it. And so I usually step in to make sure that I'm talking to the market and saying, hey, this person is great. And if you're a realtor, I need to make sure that our collateral speaks to the value that you already are. And if I'm providing the assistance, I know that you're going to get the job done as soon as they call you or visit your website. We're just doing our job to make sure that they inquire so that they can see your greatness. Uh, in the last few minutes, I want to give some advice to people about uh, graphic design because you're very talented in that regard. And colors tell a story on your website. Like, like I was told that like blue is a safe uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, color that basically conveys, uh, you can trust me. Mm -hmm. Red is like an alarm color, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do you run into clients that, that are just using the wrong font style using the, red? I mean, I can only imagine what you, what you run into. <laughs> Jeff, that's, that's a question that requires a three hour answer. <laughs> uh, so what I would say is yes. Um, I'll give you a quick percentage over the years. Uh, what I've noticed is 70% of the clients that come to us with pre-existing artwork is usually done wrong. 
Now, how, how do I define wrong? Meaning it doesn't function and doesn't, it's not maximized. And for the reasons that you're describing, usually the font is inconsistent. They don't understand the logo symbol. symbol. I'll give you a term that most people have never heard of, a visual identity guide that guides you on how to use your logo, when to use it against dark backgrounds, light backgrounds, the color codes. If these things sound foreign to you, it, it means that you need these things so that you can survive in the business world and make sure that things are consistent for your brand. And so that is something that we take pride in. And so uh, usually in client sessions, uh, I'll get to explain these things and the clients, will they'll take out their material. So, and they'll say, well, what do you think about this? And it's because they want to know. Yeah. Because no one may have not told them. Before. Brandon, I can see why you're so talented and, and uh, so popular because uh, a therapist has a way of, de of saying to the, the client, um, your baby's not ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if we put a bow in the hair and maybe some rouge, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there's a thing where I, I do need to get compensated, so I don't want to insult them. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there's an art. There's an art to guiding people towards another way of looking at their own brand. Absolutely. You know, let's be honest. I tell clients all the time, you know what? Uh, my knowledge of this information doesn't make me any better or worse. It just means this is my specialty. And so um, at some point, I've got to be able to step in and say, hey, hey let me guide. But that doesn't take any anything away from their ability. If you're a mechanic, you will never see me compete with you to work on your car. I'm going to make sure that people love you because of your gift. I just want to display that better. Wow. You've been an amazing guest. You're going to have to come back. Uh, and I want to meet your wife at some point. Uh, we're going to end with the website, which is therapyfirm.com. The great Brandon Powell. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Right. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.